Hello, folks, and welcome to the Plain Mundane Show. I'm Alex Aquarius, and right now we're going to talk about the world's cultural stories that all have a crucified Savior that even existed as quote unquote Christianity before Christ. Now, this comes from a source called This Awareness which comes from um, a website called the uh, Conscious Awareness Communications. Uh, these are some articles that I've, I've drawn from. I use with permission. Uh, let me just read this here. The book, The World's 16 Crucified Saviors or Christianity Before Christ. This awareness indicates that there is a book written which entity should study. By the way, we are the entities. You're an entity. I'm an entity. That comes from Maritime Admiralty Law. If you've been looking on YouTube and seen, uh, what's his name? Jordan Maxwell. He describes Admiralty Maritime Law. Very, the law of water rules over any law of any land. And in the Uniform Commercial Code, which comes from the Vatican or the bar in the city of London, and also supported in the District of Columbia, an Egyptian goddess, okay, <laughs> which goes back to your, uh, one of these actual 16 stories. The mother, okay, so let's go back. This awareness indicates that there is a book which entities should study if they are further interested in this. It is titled 60, 16 Crucified Saviors or Christianity Before Christ, something to that effect. This awareness indicates that it tells of the various parallels to the Christian story from earlier writings of other cultures, wherein the hero of those earlier cultures and writings experienced or acted out the same kind of activities as did the later Jesus Christ in the Christian religion. These down to details such as the washing of the feet, healing the blind, the raising of the dead, and similar teachings to that of Jesus and also the virgin birth and being hanged or otherwise killed for this effort. This awareness indicates that the Krishna parallel is the one which contains the most similar experiences, but there are also a number of others, a total of 16 saviors in all, whose lives paralleled Jesus, even in some of the exact situations. Awareness has discussed the last taboo area, why people accept a religion without much question. This awareness, which is the name of the uh, Conscious Awareness Group, some people might call it a New Age group, but it's it's not to be ridiculed or put down or thought as a uh, Luciferian, evil-driven thing. It's uh, What we're talking about in my videos that I post is an awareness that perhaps the story in the Bible that we have, that what we call the New Testament of who we call Jesus the Christ, is perhaps not historically true as a specific account, but as a composite of 16 stories or myths, it is true. And there are a lot of things in the Bible which are uh, just come straight out of astrology. Like when the disciples asked Jesus, when you're gone, in other words, when we come out of Pisces, uh, who Christ was known as the initiator of the period or house known as Pisces, Piscean era. Just like Moses started Aries. Remember, he said, now we blow the ram's horn. And the people who were burning the calf, they were in Taurus. And then he went from Taurus to Aries to Pisces. And now Aquarius, which is why I chose my name, Alex Aquarius. We're already there and we're supposed to be getting knowledge here, folks. And I'm pouring it out like water. <laughs> That's what my name means. So, oh, when the disciples asked Jesus, said, uh, when you're gone, what do we do? And he said, go find the man with the pitcher of water on his back, Aquarius quote-unquote, uh, in parentheses, and follow him into his house, in other words, Zodiac house. So after you leave Pisces, which was Jesus's 2,000, 2,100 years, then we go into Aquarius, which is there should be another leader come, which will be incarnated, could be the same spirit of Christ in another body. That's another truth. Is, uh, we're finding out that reincarnation is what uh, happens in our world, in our cosmos, and in our dimensions or densities all the way up to God in the firmament. Uh, there is reincarnation. Resurrection actually comes from the story of some of these other 
saviors, but the one that we would call Baal worship is Tammuz and the son of Easter who was killed and three days later from December 22nd to 25th was resurrected. And that was where the, they also performed a fertility ritual to the sun god Baal, who Tammuz became Baal. And that's why there's rabbits, who represent a high fertility mammal, and eggs, who also represent fertility, because there's an orgy uh, having to do with the menstrual cycle, the first 28 days of the full moon, which, as you know, regulates a menstrual cycle, um, after the spring equinox. You can look it up, folks. This is where the date of Easter comes from. When we celebrate the resurrection of quote unquote Jesus, it's actually the story of Tammuz, T A M U T A M M U Z, and the fertility ritual. So there's no accident that we just happen to have a rabbit and Easter eggs, okay? It's the fertility ritual, which that's why they had the orgy on the Easter date and celebrate Ishtar, which is known as Easter. And they had those babies, which were later sacrificed and thrown into the fire, which is also known as Moloch which is the uh, can be an owl today known as the uh, and that sacrifice when they burn the child is known as that came from the orgy ritual from the previous year it's sick I know uh, but this is what people are still doing today like out in Bohemian Grove the cremation of care is what they call it that's the one that Alex Jones went and filmed across the water you've seen that let me get back to reading this article. Okay. This awareness indicates that it is amazing how religion can get started and grow and become so powerful. At some point, money becomes extremely important in, in a religion. And when money begins to take on its extreme importance, when a religion becomes well-funded by a people, the religion grows ever so quickly and becomes much more established in a material sense. And therefore, its roots become strong and it grows even without close examination. Oh, boy, is that true. Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons prevent challenges. In some cases, entities will take extreme action to hide any challenge or to quell any challenge to the religion. This was done in Christianity. This awareness indicates that it has also been accomplished in a number of other religions, including the Mormon Church and the Jehovah's Witnesses. This awareness indicates that as entities see their religion growing, it makes more entities feel the religion must have validity. Or why would it grow so much? And therefore, they jump on the bandwagon, so to speak, simply because that's what everyone is doing. This awareness indicates, in other words, the stronger the growth of a religion, the more quickly and easily it is accepted, without discernment as to its validity. At the beginning, a religion struggles from the belief of a few people. This awareness indicates that eventually, those few people fade and others take it on. And without questioning, the religion is eventually accepted by others simply because someone says, this is the one. And that is enough for some entities. And then they become fanatical about their religion. Most people never stop to question the origin or validity of their religion. They simply accept the claims promoted by the religion and its promoters. This awareness indicates that it is like a steamroller or a locomotive. It is hard to get started, but once it starts rolling, it is almost impossible to stop. Remember, always be allowed to doubt, to question. This awareness indicates that it wishes entities to recognize the need for always being allowed to question, to explore, and not be forced into belief of anything. You may accept something partially, believe something, but keep some of your doubts at all times in order to evaluate the concepts and ideas which you hold clear, for that creates a healthy mind one which is not closed by some programming, but one which can evaluate, study, and explore from evidence. This awareness reminds you the mind is never truly thinking until it turns and questions everything it knows. All right, folks, uh, I'm going to end it there. Uh, we didn't get it specifically into the 16 uh, crucified saviors, wherever you can look them up. Uh, I mentioned a short list I can think of. Let's see. Uh, the story of Jesus is one, but it, it's a composite of Krishna's story, Dionysus, Apollo or Apollyon, Ap Apollonius of Apollo, Ap Apollonius of Tiana, uh, Zoroaster, uh, Dionysus, uh, Tammuz, uh, Horus of Egypt, 
Um, gosh, I'm probably leaving out seven or eight, but um, that's what we're talking about. So when you see the New Testament, it's astrotheology. Also look up, there's a person who does some really good uh, videos on astrotheology in the Zodiac from a, a ex Jehovah Witness uh, Christian perspective. His name is Santos Bonacci. His, he's really good for explaining that and where these uh, astrological quotes come right out of the Bible from this composite story of Jesus and the, the story of the cross and the death and resurrection, which is appearing, folks, to not be true. I believe the man lived, known as Jesus. He was also known as Isa in India, the man who was crucified in Jerusalem. Who's to say he didn't escape? Who's to say he didn't... Uh, He's not our savior, but he taught us how to raise our vibration, how to see God, how to do the things that he was the example of doing and how to meet God. But when it comes down to needing a redeemer, that comes from maritime admiralty law, which was the law before Constantine. You know, This comes from pharaohs and royal families and bloodlines from the guardians, things like that. It, it's been so eradicated and taken away from our knowledge that we will still argue about this when we'll wake up and accept some of these teachings that I'm showing you and then thump the Bible, which came from the secret societies and the people who took 2,200 scrolls and stories and all of these different cultural uh, myths and put them into 66 books. Everyone compromised. Nobody was satisfied, and they uh, call it the Bible. And people thump it and say, every word in here is the word of God. And they find prophecies that come true. And I prayed about it when I was in church. And I had warm feelings and answers to prayer. And I could bear my testimony. But, you know, as I pray and learn about this and I'm guided through these deep things I'm finding, uh, I'm getting those same warm feelings. And uh, it's confusing at first, but you learn that your body is so cosmically celestial and godlike as a fractal of the energy of the Creator that we can have those feelings and those confirmations and those feelings to prayer and meditation. Um, it's when you start thinking that you asked a question and you closed everything else off and said, yep, that's it, this is the one. Uh, then you might find out that you're wrong, but it's like I was, I had a cognitive dissonance that gave me an objection where I was having these this knowledge and these feelings for 20 something years, but stayed with my church but always had a, a great rift between what I knew in cognitive dissonance with what I was feeling according to what I'd been programmed with. But when, when I finally broke free, uh, where I am now with the things I'm reading to you and the things that I find, it's exciting. We're going to bust the people who've been controlling this wrong information on earth. We're supposed to hack it and bust it open. If you're listening to my site, you're one of us. I joke and tell my mother, there's 144,000 of us, and that's it worldwide. <laughs> she looked at me. Totally joking. Anyway, hit like and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications uh, when I make the next video. And y'all have a great day.